Hello everyone. Proceeding further, we are going to learn the advanced concepts of entity framework on the database that is nothing but my org. And we are going to use our employee and department tables. Now you can see that I have changed the names of these tables from tbl underscore employee to employee and tbl underscore dept to department. Now these are the best practices whenever you are naming your database tables it is always good to name them as your object names. Now here I have started a new console app to understand the advanced concepts let us try to understand them on console app and we are going to explore entity data model with the latest version of entity framework. So I'm going to add right click on the project and say add new item. I'm going to select data and ADO.NET entity data model and name it as my org model. Now you can see here there are four approaches using which you can work with your entity data model. First is nothing but EF designer from database entity framework designer from database now you can read the description and understand what it does creates a model in the entity framework designer based on existing database that means this approach is nothing but creating a model based on existing database the next approach is entity framework designer model empty entity framework designer model so what are we going to do here creates an empty model in the entity framework designer as a start point for visually designing your models so what we are going to do we'll have a ui to design the models we design the model first then it is going to generate a database from your models this is the second approach so first approach we have database and we are generating models automatically and second approach we do not have database we are designing models and it is going to generate database automatically next is empty code first model so in this we do not have database like we neither have database nor models we are going to write simple classes and it is going to generate a database from that. So code first approach, we call it as code first approach. So we write code and that code is going to generate the database automatically. We do not have database. Now the last approach is we already have a database and we are going to write code against the existing database or the tables. So database is already available. We are going to write or, you know, we are going to code against that. Whereas here we do not have database. We are going to write the code. It is going to generate the database. Here we are not at all going to code anything. We design the model. It is going to generate database. Whereas here we have database. We are going to generate models. So these are the various approaches using which you can work with your entity framework. But in our tutorial, we are going to focus on the first approach that is nothing but we have a database and we are going to generate entity data model from the database. Now I will say next. So I'm going to connect. So you can see that I have got the connection string over here. And I'm going to connect to my ThinkPad PC SQL Server Express and database name is myorg and here we have the metadata which contains the information about csdl ssdl and msl so we have already seen these things in our basic video tutorial so anyway we are going to explore it in this video as well now i'll say next so here i have an option whether i work with entity framework 6 or five. I'm going to work with Entity Framework 6. So I'll say next. Now from tables, 
I can explore and I want to get department and employee table. That's it. I'm going to take these two tables for now. And you can see that I have an option pluralize or singularize generated objects names means what? So department is a table. The plural of department is departments that will become the list. Employee is a table. The plural of employee is employees. So that will become a list of employees. So it is going to do all those things automatically. Now I'll say finish. I'll say OK and OK. Now I get my EDM or entity data model EDMX file. So here I have EDMX file. I'll just right click and I'll say open with XML editor. Now here you can see that it has again the three parts what already we have seen in our earlier videos. It has SSDL storage schema definition language which contains the information about the tables that we have in our database. We have conceptual schema definition language which contains the information about the classes and the objects. That means I need what are the classes that I need to generate. And there is a mapping between them which says you know this table is mapped to this class and this column is mapped to this property. So this is the same thing that we were generating in our earlier versions. Now, if you observe here, my organization model dot designer dot CS is empty. Means what? We are not at all going to work with our old code generation strategy. That's why it is empty. But if you observe, there are two TT files here. What I have discussed in my earlier video about TT files. There are two TT files. One TT file is my org model dot context dot TT. Now you can see that this TT file is taking EDMX file as the input file to generate code. So it has generated the code. So this is the code it has generated. And you can see that this class is my context class. Means what I'm going to create the object of this context class. This context class is inheriting DB context class. So in our latest version, we are going to work with DB context. If you see this, Earlier, it was generating object context. So it was inheriting object context class. But now it is generating DB context class. So my context class is inherited from DB context. Now, if I say F12 to this DB context, you can see that DB context is inheriting I object context adapter. Now, if I say F12, I object context adapter has a property that is object context. So that means DB context is also a kind of object context, or I can say DB context is wrap up over or it is a wrap up of object context. So DB context is wrapped over object context. If I say F12 on DB context, you can see that DB context is inherited from I object context adapter. If I F12 on I con object context adapter, you can see that it has object context. So now I can say that DB context is wrap over object context. So DB context is giving better support or you can say better API or you know better methods when we compare to object context. So all our latest developments we are going to do in DB context. So this is the context 
class that has been generated by your TT file and which is reading the information from my org model. Now, this model has got two tables or you can say two classes. So there is another TT file that is nothing but my org model dot TT. It is also reading the same ADMX file and it is generating the entities. You can see that I have got department dot CS employee dot CS as I have two tables or you can say two models. So I have got two entities, one for department and another for employee. And if you observe this department class, this is a simple class, simple class with set of properties. It does not have any special attributes. So this is a plain class or you can say plain old CLR object. So that is nothing but POCO. So your latest version of entity framework works with POCO, P-O-C-O, -O, plain old CLR objects. So they are generating plain old CLR objects. Whereas our earlier version, they were generating some specialized or, you know, some classes which inherits from some other classes. So these classes are not at all inheriting from any other class. Now let us try to convert this to our old code generation strategy. So I'll right click on this designer and go to the properties. Code generation strategy is T4. In our earlier version, Microsoft was giving an opportunity to change this code generation strategy. But now we do not have any option to change this. But what we can do, I'll just go to the XML file and I'll try to hack it. And if you see this designer part, code generation strategy is none. I'll change it to default. And we are sure that it is not going to work. It is going to throw some exceptions and all, but it should generate some classes. So I'll look into the designer. Now you can see that designer, it has generated the context. My org entity is now inherited from object context. So this is the old strategy and this is the new strat new strategy and we are quite sure that both of them are not going to work at the same time but just to understand the things i'm showing the classes which has got generated automatically so this is the class got generated automatically with t4 templates and this is the class got generated automatically with our old strategy it has got inherited from object context. Now, now if we observe entities, you see that department is an entity which has got inherited from entity object and it has some special attributes, serializable data contract attribute, EDM entity type attribute. So that's why these are not plain old CLR objects. These are not POCO classes. Whereas the entities that we have generated with the latest approach is a plain class department. So this is the difference between object context and DB context. We can say that and DB context is wrap over object context. And there are various scenarios where we need to get a reference to object context from DB context. So even we can do that and we need that in our future implementation. So that is also possible because it is a wrap over. Now let me go back to my model. So open with XML editor. Let me set this to none. Save all. Now you should see these classes as empty. So let me rebuild this. Rebuild succeeded. Now we are ready with our my org model and 
db context object that is nothing but my organization entities so now whenever i want to work with entity framework i need to create the object of my org entities now i'm going to work with this object in our next video we will see crud operations using db context object it is nothing but oe so how do we perform crud operation using this latest approach so that's it for this video thank you very much